The Privateer 141 takes everything that we know and love about Privateer's 161 Enduro bike, but teamed it down just a touch to create a more trail-friendly package. While this bike's aesthetic may be tarnished just a bit by the odd weld here or there, this bike's all about the cracking kit for the money and a super progressive geometry. This is the full review. So saying that Privateer has dialed down the 161 to create this bike is actually a bit harsh because this bike is still mega progressive and it still carries that Privateer ethos. And that's because this bike gets a lot of the same tech, so that includes the offset pivot bearings that better distributes load across the frame, and the one-piece rocker link that boosts stiffness and extends bearing longevity. What is different though is that Privateer has tweaked the suspension kinematic to better suit trail riding. So the whole platform is designed around the Fox Float X shock, and that's because of its small bump sensitivity and its ease of use. It also gets a tune that's specific to this bike and there's 145% anti-squat at the sag point. So Privateer has also tweaked the geometry on this bike, dialing it back a little bit from the 161, but for a trail bike it's still massively progressive. So this size P3 frame gets a 485mm reach, a 64.5 degree head tube angle and around a 78 degree seat tube angle. There's then a 446mm chainstay and that all results in a 1,266mm wheelbase. Going back to the chain state, it stretches from the smaller sizes up to the larger sizes. There are two models of this bike available, the GX36 and the GX Pike. As you can imagine, the GX36 gets a Fox 36 fork, whereas the GX Pike gets a RockShox Pike Ultimate. The spec elsewhere is basically the same. As for pricing, the GX Pike will cost you £3,689, whereas the GX36 will set you back £100 more. On test, we have the GX Pike model. As for the rest of the spec, as the name suggests, there's a SRAM GX Eagle group set, and then there are SRAM Code R brakes. As for the wheels, they come from Hunt, and they are the trail wise, and they're wrapped with a Schwalbe Magic Mirror at the front, and a hands damp at the rear. And it is great to see proper rubber on the 141, as these tyres will cope with almost everything that the UK's conditions can throw at them. They are a little bit draggy, but they grip almost everywhere. There's then a one-up component V2 dropper post with 200mm of travel, and the rest of the kit comes from Raceface, apart from this WTB Volt saddle. Now, as a whole, that's a build kit that I just cannot complain about, especially for the money. And now, let's get on to some riding impressions. And straight off the bat, the Privateer 141 impressed. And while it's a bike that's clearly designed more for the descent, the steep seat tube angle and the stable suspension kinematic and the pedaling makes it an absolute pleasure to climb. That steep seat tube angle places right away nice and centrally over the bike. And because the reach is rather long and there's an 800mm bar, the cockpit remains nice and roomy. Then that longish chain stay means that you just don't have to worry about weight distribution when you're going up those climbs. It also offers a rather relaxed but upright position when you're saddled, so if you suffer from a bit of back pain, this bike is well worth considering. While it's an efficient pedaler at 25% sag, if you run any more, the suspension has a tendency to blow through its travel. But set the suspension up correctly, and again, it's a pleasure to climb. It's just that 16 kilo weight that comes a little bit noticeable. But Privateer has designed this bike with longevity and durability in mind. So with that, I can definitely give the brand for an extra few kilos, especially when the bike pedals so well as it is. So on to its descending prowess, and prowess it certainly has because when tipping this into my first ever trail, it was frightening how quick this is. It's just stable and confident in a straight line, and that's all due to the bike's length, head angle, and overall wheelbase. Whether it's over flatter trails or over something a little bit more spicy, the 141 is hugely confident too, and it's kept me assured enough to keep my fingers away from the brakes. The head tube at 130mm length is pretty tall, but this helps especially through steep sections as it shifts weight a little further back, but when combined with its 645 degree head tube angle, it offers a supportive and reliable front end. However, the 141 loses a bit of its sure-footedness when hurtling through high-speed tech, and that's simply because it's got such an aggressive geometry, but with relatively little suspension travel. It takes a calculated approach to these sections, rather than one of a steamroller. That is all part of the 141's charm as it massages your ego, but it stops your head from getting a little too big. So that high anti-squat figure does lead to a bit of pedal kickback when it comes to the high speed techie sections, and that could be why this bike feels a little bit overwhelmed when doing them. So that suspension kinematic is exactly what reminds you that the 141 is a trail bike. It's poppy, supportive, 
great fun and it's just encouraging of hitting any kinds of trail gaps. And this is what makes the 141 stand out against this bigger 16 watt brother. So with that long wheelbase, it's really clear that this bike is well pretty long. So in the corners, you definitely need a little bit more forethought in your line choice, but it's something to be expected of a bike like this, and it's something that you come to learn pretty quickly. And going back to that 130 mm head tube, well, it is, it, it's rather tall. And while it's excellent in the steep sections and supportive, when over flatter trails, it's, I would like to have my handlebars a little bit lower, but fortunately, there's nothing we can do about that yet. It is something you learn to live with, however. So let's talk about the value a little bit. And with an asking price of £3,689, it's, it's awesome value for money thanks to its excellent build kit. But if we compare with a few other bikes, there's the Vitus Escarp CRS that'll set you back £3,200. That one gets a full carbon frame, which is pretty impressive, but its build kit isn't as nice as this one, and its geometry isn't near as progressive. You may have noticed that I compare to Canyon quite a lot in these videos, but that's because generally they offer some pretty good value for money. However, the Canyon Spectral 29 CF7 doesn't quite stack up, unless you want a carbon frame. Again, that bike's uh, geometry is super progressive, but it just doesn't come with the component tree that you'll find on this one. If the fabled Quiver Killer was such a thing, the Privateer 141 GX Pike may well just be the Holy Grail. With an excellent build kit for the cash, a properly progressive geometry and an excellent suspension kinematic, the 141 is a really well-rounded trail bike that would be as happy slaying single track as it would be attempting something a little bit spicier. Privateer has done a commendable job with this bike. So that is the full review of the Privateer 141 GX Pike. If you would like to see a more in-depth review on this bike, head over to www.off.road.c where you'll see a full write-up. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, where we'll show you more reviews on bikes just like this one, and the brand new Merida 140 coming very soon. As always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.